All right, what's up guys? Uh, today we're gonna talk about the draw. Now, the draw is something that you guys have been requesting a lot. Uh, to be honest, it's, it's my most requested video and I'll be honest with you guys, I have actually put off making this video because it is really difficult to explain um, simply because I think there's a lot of nuance and a lot of context that has to be provided when we talk about drawing a gun in half a second right so um, but I'm gonna do my best to explain this to you break it down for you guys and give you as much detail as possible all right so there's two things that I'm trying to accomplish with the draw number one is I've got to get the gun from point A which is at rest in the holster to point B which is presented on target with my dot on the appropriate target I've got to do that um, with and as quickly as possible, right? The second thing is I've got to actually form up a good grip out of the holster. And so my ideal grip with the ideal grip pressures and ideal hand placement has to all happen from the holster with no adjustment. So as I access the gun out of the holster and bring it up in front of my eye line, I need to arrive with a perfect grip. Okay, so those are the two things that I'm gonna to try to accomplish. Now, in regards to getting the gun from point A to point B as efficiently as possible, there's two things that we can break down there. Number one is gonna be the efficiency of the draw stroke and of the draw mechanics. And number two is going to simply be hand speed and reaction time. Okay, so those are the two kind of things that we're gonna to have to focus on. Let's talk about how to get the gun from point A to point B um, as quickly as possible or as efficiently as possible. Um, a lot of guys will talk about uh, on the presentation of the gun. When the gun comes up, you contact it with that index point under the trigger guard and present it up to your eye line. A lot of really good shooters will talk about that gun needs to be presented on a straight line. Everybody knows the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Um, I like to say the gun is going to ride an escalator up, right? And so escalators move two directions. They move up and they move forward and uh, those are the only two directions they go, but they do that in a straight line. So once the gun comes out of the holster, right, and then I'm presenting it onto the target, it needs to move in a perfectly straight line. It ends up being about a 45 degree angle. All right, so let's talk about start positions. Now, your hands can start anywhere, right? Um, my hands right now, I like to talk with my hands kind of at this chest level. I could start my draw from here and go straight to my gun, and that's gonna be the most efficient thing ever, right? As long as my right hand goes in a straight line down to the gun, I'm gonna be good to go. I might have more of a surrender start, like you guys have seen in USPSA, where we bring our hands up, it's wrists above shoulders, something like that, and then from here, my hand has to drop down in a straight line to my gun, and then we're doing a presentation, right? Um, here's the thing, though. Whenever it's on me to do the fastest draw possible, uh, it's always best to start with your hands as close to the gun as possible. And so for me, that's that wrist below belt start um, that looks kind of something like this, right? Now, when we talk about wrist below belt, uh, there's a couple things that I do to help me know exactly where my gun is, okay? A really big fancy word that some people have used before is called uh, proprioceptive indexing. Um, so proprioceptive index just means that the body knows where the rest of the body is, right? And so if I'm just trying to find something floating in space that I'm not looking at, I could have a hard time doing that. But my body can find the rest of my body without looking at it. Um, just like I've never seen my ears, right? But I can always reach up and grab my ear. I'm never gonna miss it. So if I start touching my gun, then my hand knows where my gun is and knows that it can go directly to that spot. So uh, what you'll always see like the gamers do is they're always standing here, they're looking at their first target, they're thinking about what they're gonna do. Their hand is on their gun in the position that they want that gun or that hand to initially contact the gun. And then you'll just kind of watch them drop that hand, right? And what I've seen almost every high level shooter do is they always have an index point of some kind. Some people have two index points, some people only have one. I like to use two index points. So when I drop down, the first index point is gonna be the meaty part of my thumb right here is gonna be resting on my holster, all right? The second index point is gonna be the inside of my forearm touching the base pad of my gun, all right? So I bring my hand into the position that I want it to be in, and then I just drop it down. So you'll see right now my thumb is touching the holster and the base pad of my magazine is touching the inside of my forearm. From here, this gives me a very good idea of exactly where my holster and my gun is. And I know that from here, I can bring my hand up in a straight line and access the gun, all right? Now, uh, a lot of people kind of tend to do the snatch draw or uh, coming up and over the gun 
jamming down onto the gun and bouncing out of the holster. That is a super viable way to draw. I just think it tends to waste some time. Um, the pros to it is it's really consistent. The cons, it's slower, right? So I've had people tell me, hey, uh, I can be just as fast bouncing out of the holster and uh, I've seen some very, very fast draws with that, but you can't convince me it is more efficient than simply bringing your hand from its rest position to the gun without going over the top and stabbing back down. Anytime I have to reverse uh, direction with my hands, it's gonna be more inefficient than just one direction, okay? Um, so from here, right, the way I access my gun is pretty important. So if you think about where my hand is, it is on the outside of where it needs to be. And so if, if you were to bring my hand straight up, I'm, all, I'm offset from the gun. And so I do have to bring it in and closer to my body. So the way I like to think about this is start with my hands. It's going to be kind of feeling like I'm starting with my hands out and then I'm bringing my hands in towards my waist, right? It's not such a big action as that but that is kind of what I'm feeling. So as I bring my hand up, I'm running the palm of my hand right along that holster. And as soon as this knuckle on my thumb bumps over the top of the, of the slide, that's when I know I can start squeezing and wrapping my fingers around and actually applying pressure to the grip. Okay, so again, running it up, as soon as it comes over the top, start squeezing, okay? That gets my hand super high. As we all know, we've got to have that right hand super high up into the gun. And then I've also got to have my right thumb flag. So now as I bring my left hand in, I have lots of room for the support hand to get on the gun. And so you'll notice that in the holster, as I access that gun for the first time, the grip is super high and my thumb is already flagged in this position up. And so that's gonna give me plenty of room for that support hand. All right, so we've talked about accessing the gun and bringing my hand from point A to point B in a straight line. Now it's time to talk about how to get the gun from point A to point B in a straight line. So as we bring the gun up, my, hand, my right hand is on the gun, left hand is staged on my stomach. As the gun comes out, what I wanna do is as soon as my muzzle clears the holster, I want to start dropping my elbow and orienting the muzzle towards the target. As I do so, you'll see that my index finger now on my left hand is directly under the trigger guard. I just come up, I find that trigger guard, I touch it, and then I simply roll into my grip, okay? Um, there's a lot to talk about with grip and where exactly we wanna place our hands and what kind of pressure we're gonna put on it, and that's gonna be a different video. If you guys want me to break down my grip in detail, let me know. I'm sure I could do that for you guys. Uh, but for now, we're just talking about mechanics of the draw. So in summary, my gun hand or my strong hand has to move in a straight line from point A at rest to point B on the gun in the holster and then the gun is going to move from point A in the holster to point B on target. Alright guys now before we go live I think it's worth noting that the way I draw is not a traditional scoop draw. Now I really don't care what you call how I draw. Uh, or really how, what you call how anybody draws, but I do think it's important to note that a traditional scoop draw, the way that I've seen that demonstrated and performed is, uh, in my opinion, a pretty dangerous thing. Okay, so the way I've seen that done a lot is people kind of curl their fingers, right? And so they know their bottom three fingers have to go under the grip. And so they start with those fingers curled, and then on the beep, they simply lift their arm up and snag the gun on the way up. Okay, now the issue here is we're not actually applying clamping force front to back while the gun is still in the holster. And so we're simply relying on moving my arm up and snagging this and then gripping the gun. And that I think number one can cause some inconsistencies with your draw and inconsistencies with your grip. But number two is dangerous because if I don't get to be able to clamp onto that gun, while the gun is being lifted from the holster, I could end up dropping my gun or throwing my gun. Um, and so that to me is just absolutely a no-go. And that's why it's super important to access the gun correctly and actually start applying grip pressure front to back while the gun is still in the holster. Now you may see the gun come up maybe an inch, but no more than that, right? So as the hand comes up, gripping and then lifting, okay? Now, uh, we're gonna go ahead and go live here. 
I'm gonna demo uh, a couple different ways. So uh, the first way is gonna be simply moving my hands at uh, let's say 10% speed, okay? And so I'll go ahead and put a delay on my timer here and uh, simply walking through this step by step, okay? So uh, I'm standing back here about five or six, yard, six yards here from the target and I'm gonna hit my timer and I'm going to just kind of walk you through. So hand starts on the gun. As I click the timer, I assume my ready position with a good two index points. As soon as the timer goes off, I start moving both hands together. Left hand comes to the index point on my stomach. The right hand closes the grip around the gun. The gun is still in the holster. From here, I'm lifting the gun out. And as soon as I feel the gun clear the holster, clear kydex, I'm going to start dropping that elbow and driving the gun forward. And as I do so, collecting the pistol here, getting that good touch point. And then from here, it's simply move it in a straight line right up to my eye line, start squeezing with my support hand, acquire my dot in the A zone, touch the trigger, fire a single shot, okay? Now, none of that can be done with any pauses in there. So now let's show you like maybe a 25% draw. Here we go. All right, so as you can see, uh, my hand is moving from point A to point B in a nice straight line, no extra movement. As soon as the gun comes out of the holster, it continues traveling up to the target. As soon as I can get my muzzle flat, I am. And then as soon as I can get my left hand on the gun, I'm doing that as well and beginning squeezing so that I actually arrive on target with a good grip, okay? So uh, even, even just kind of walking through that super slow, that was a 238. Let's try it like half speed now. All right, here we go. All right, that was a 154. So already we're talking about a one and a half second draw. Now, the way I'm accomplishing a time like one and a half seconds at six yards is simply efficiency and how I'm accessing the gun out of the holster and how I'm bringing that gun up in front of my face. There's nothing else helping me out. Now, how are we gonna get down to a second, right? This is where you have to add in things like hand speed and a faster reaction time. So a lot of things, uh, a lot of times, you just have to learn by doing, and I think hand speed is one of those things. Once you have the technique down and you know that your technique is solid to bring the gut up in a very efficient path and also get the gut up and be applying the correct grip pressures, from there, all I have to do is just move my hands faster, okay? So if I move my hands just a little bit faster, uh, not a lot, just a little, this is what that might look like. All right, so still not moving my hands very fast, right? Uh, but that was a 121. So now we've shaved off about a third of a second, and uh, now I'm getting a lot closer to that goal of one second. All right, now based off of what I've done so far, where's the last place that I can uh, shave off some time? Well, number, number one, I could move my hands even faster, right? And then number two is I could respond to this timer. So if I'm putting every shot on a timer, then as soon as that sound goes, I've got to start moving my hands, okay? And so if you think about, and I didn't come up with this, this is, a lot of instructors have said this, but if you think about the, uh, the tone of the buzzer being a B-E-E-P, the word beep, as soon as you hear the B or the B of the beep, we've got to start moving. So I want to start going as soon as the tone begins and not wait until the tone is finished. So the tone itself on these AMG Lab Commander timers is about a third of a second. It's pretty long. So if I wait until the tone is all the way over and then I start moving, I've already burned at least a third of a second. And if I could start at the beginning, I could probably buy back a tenth, maybe even two tenths of a second on the draw. So without changing my hand speed much, I'm gonna just try to react a little bit earlier and see if that helps me out. All right, and just reacting a little bit faster, I did move my hands a little bit faster as well. That's a .92, and of course, uh, they're all alphas over there in the target. So, now, with sub-second draws, right? Sub-second draws seem to be the, the kind of the internet standard. 
right? I'm here to tell you that uh, I don't think sub second draw should be the standard from a race rig like this anymore, right? I think it should be, I think the bar should be uh, set higher and that part time should be set lower. All right, so the way we're gonna accomplish that is all the things that I've already talked about. I've still gotta keep the consistent draw, but I'm gonna move my hands pretty dang fast. I'm going to react to the timer as early as possible and I'm gonna break the shot without over confirming that shot. So here's the deal with over confirming, right? What a lot of people can do really well is they can get the gun from the holster to the target and then they have this long pause. They're hanging out, hanging out, hanging out. Oh, there's my dot, yep, okay. Now it's still, it's in the center of the air. Boom, right? And they hung out on target for a really long amount of time. Well, the benefit of getting the gun out fast and in front of your face fast is that I don't have to hang out, right? I'm getting it on target. I'm, ha I'm giving myself time to see what I need to see and then I'm pressing the shot. A lot of people struggle with over confirmation. The other thing I see with draws, and I've been guilty of this myself as I've explored the speed mode, is uh, under confirming, right? Where I'm breaking that shot way too early, okay? And so what that looks like in slow-mo is you'll see somebody coming out of the holster, bringing the gun up, and the gun's right about here, right? Now, was that gun in my eye line? No, not even, not even close, right? It was about right here. Um, and actually, if we come down and look at the target, Justin, uh, yeah, so that was my shot right there. So still an A zone at six yards, right? Which is kind of hilarious. Now, does that mean that I can't, that, that, that it's impossible to, uh, you know, get A zone shots without actually seeing my dot? No, not at all, right? I have a pretty high likelihood of just simply being nice and square to the target, bringing the gun up in front of my face, and just looking at the target through my optic or over the top of it or just aligning the back plate of my gun and being able to shoot. In fact, if I turn my dot all the way down, so it's off now, just bring it up and I have a perfectly dead centered A zone shot. And I'll turn my dot on because that was weird. All right, so I don't need to actually see my reticle to get a good alpha zone hit, that's my point. However, if I want to guarantee an alpha zone hit, I do have to see reticle. Now, it does not have to be a stopped stable dot in the middle of the target, it just has to be the color red or the color of my reticle inside that A zone to get an A zone shot. And that's where I'm going to have consistent speed where I'm actually guaranteeing my hits. Okay, so there's, there's a time when we can do predictive shooting and there's a time when we can shoot based off of the confirmation level of seeing color on the target where it needs to be. Um, so, is there a place for predictive shooting? I think so. Some, some inter, inter, internet standards uh, when, we're, when we're set up in a nice square position, everything's perfect, I'm not moving, I'm in my ideal stance, ideal uh, start position, nice open target, nice and close. Yeah, man, you can absolutely start pulling the trigger without seeing a dot. I think that's absolutely fine because you can, you can, you can guarantee a, a certain level of accuracy, right? But when we wanna really get serious with ourselves, that's when we gotta actually see a reticle. So, uh, I will demo this a couple more times. The last shot we did was a 9-2. Was a um, let's see what we can actually accomplish in terms of speed when we really kind of uh, heat up a little bit. All right, guys, so I kind of showed you my demo speed and the way I'm accomplishing those uh, really fast draws. Now it's time to turn on the heat and actually see what we can accomplish with our draws here. So uh, we'll start off with guaranteeing a, zone, a couple of A zone hits uh, at full speed with moving my hands as fast as I, as I normally would. And then we'll start really trying to push it and see if we can shave, uh, man, it's gonna be hundreds of a second off the draw. All right, here we go. Six yards, A zone, here we go. All right, so first shot out of the holster going at speed, that's a .71 and it's an A zone down range. All right, so .71. Uh, is about right for me uh, when I'm pushing that draw speed. I'm really locked in, I'm warmed up, and I am warm today. Um, so that's about right for me. So let's try it again. Uh, let's maybe do uh, two more around the same speed. Here we go. All right, there's another A zone shot. That's in a .75. All right, .75 just to the right. And let's try one more at that speed. Here we go. All right, and that's another 0.75 exactly. All right, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the target. So 
first shot here, second shot here, third shot here, a little low in the A zone. Honestly, that's where I'm seeing my dot up here, and so I'm sending it. As I present the gun, uh, just the way it works out for me is I generally start seeing the top of my optic interacting with about the bottom of the A zone. So as soon as I see the reticle in the A zone, um, or on the target, it should be in the A zone as long as I'm aligned uh, correctly in the middle of the target. And if my grip pressures are correct, then that's where it'll be. And so as soon as I'm recognizing red dot in the alpha zone, I'm pressing the trigger. And so it makes a lot of sense for me to have uh, alpha zone hits kind of low in the target when I'm pushing the speed. All right, so now let's push it back, all right? And let's see if we can do something a little bit faster than that 0.75. I'm really happy with keeping an A zone. I'm seeing a flash of the color. So that for me is a good confirmation one uh, draw right there. Now, what could we do with adding a little bit of confirmation one, a little bit of predict predictive shooting, right? This is where I know the gun is gonna come up to this spot, and so I, I've already made the decision to fire, the gun's coming up, I'm pressing the trigger uh, when I think it's there. We'll combine a little bit of that with a little bit of a better reaction time. I'm gonna do my best to all but jump the timer on this. All right, here we go. So that was just out uh, on the Charlie side, just about an inch out on the left, and that's a 0.57, all right? Uh, so that's okay, at six yards, I wish it was an alpha, but that's kind of the gamble you play when you're pressing the trigger predictively instead of uh, reacting to the street. All right, here we go, let's try it again. All right, so almost no support hand grip on that. My support hand was super late. 0.59, it was a delta, all right? So super bad, super bad. Uh, let's try it again. All right, there we got one in the alpha right on the top line. That was a 0 0.62, all right? Let's try one more and see if we can center it up. There we go. And that was a 0.54, all right, 0.54. So what kind of speed can you expect out of something, a draw that is mechanically efficient and then you're adding a good reaction time and good hand speed? Something around a half a second, I think. Out of something like this, race holster, uh, no active retention, something like that. Um, now. What about the guys who are running active retention holsters? I get this a lot. Hey man, I run a Safari Land holster, I run a Blade holster, something like that with retention, and uh, that kind of draw is not possible. I have to come up and over and down on the gun. Let's check it out. All right, so now we've got the ALS holster on, right? This is kind of my uh, battle belt or uh, more tactical style belt. They all do the same thing, guys. But this is this belt's from Blue Alpha. Really like this thing. And I've got an ALS holster from Safari Land 6390 series. Super good retention holsters. Uh, and then the same mag pouches as before. So uh, in, all, in all intents and purposes, this belt is set up exactly the same. I just have a little bit of a different uh, holster on here. So um, I've got this thing mounted to a negative camp plate and then right to a true north hanger. So this thing sits pretty close to my body um, and it's not on a QLS or anything like that, but the holster does sit pretty straight up and down. Um, now on my competition holster, I kind of have a, a negative cant on that a little bit, um, but this has a pretty neutral one. So the grip angle and, and attacking the gun is just slightly different, but here's, here's the real thing, right? Everybody that says you have to come over the gun and stab down onto it in order to defeat the ALS, and for those of you who don't know, the ALS is just this little button right down here that you have to pull back on with your thumb in order to release the gun. If you don't pull back on it, right, it doesn't come out of the holster. So you have to push back and then it comes out, right? Everybody who says that you have to come over the gun and stab down onto it to defeat the ALS, they're wrong, all right? And I will show you how that works. So just like in the regular draw, I'm just going to find my index point, uh, right thumb touching the holster, uh, inside of my forearm touching my mag, and I'm finding those good two index points. From here, it's just going to be bringing the hand up, going over the holster, it's a little bit wider, no problem, finding uh, my thumb flagged, and then all I have to do is apply a little bit of downward motion with that thumb, 
and the gun releases and out it comes. All right, so let's put it on a timer and see what we think. This first one here, just nice and comfortable. See my dot center to the A zone, a comfortable hand speed, all of that, and then we'll ramp up. Here we go. All right, hung up a little bit on my holster, still 0.97, all right, and that's an A zone on the left side. All right, so now, uh, yeah, slip second, no problem. Let's try, uh, let's try to get a little bit lower. Here we go. All right, A zone right at the very bottom. That was a 0.78. All right, let's try it again. All right, that was off on the left. Bad support hand. Uh, if you watch that pack in slow mo, you'll see my support hand lagging. It was a 0.77. We're on paper, but it was a delta. That was, that was not so good. Uh, let's try it again. All right, Charlie, uh, just high. That's a 0.75, and one more. All right, and that one was an alpha, right down the center in 0.74. So I'll show you the camera here. Or show you, show you the target here. Uh, so the first shot right there, alpha on the line. Second shot low. Third shot over here in the delta. Fourth shot high in the Charlie. Last shot right there in the Alpha. So as you guys can see, I'm a little bit rusty on my ALS work, but guys, that is what I have for the draw video. So if you have any questions or anything I said sparked something that you wanna see another video done on, uh, please be sure to let me know in the comments. Please do leave me a comment. I appreciate it, I read them all. And uh, give me a subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, see you guys in the next video. Can I try it? The ALS. What, the draw? Yeah. Yeah. Here. Here, okay. give me the timer. Okay. See, see if that. Uh, see if I can do that. We got there, bud. Yeah. Oh, it's just a block. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. You should clip the same pants, right? Okay. There we go. All right. That was a 0.69. Nah, that's a parlor trick. Let's do it again. That, there's no way you could do that again. That was a Charlie. Stand by. It was a 0.75. Me. Let's do it again. Stand by. The low Charlie, 0 0.67. One more time. Let's do it one more time. One more time. Mulligan! Here we go. I guess it works. How about that? Can't be. <laughs>